I owe you a 10 second car. What, uh, what do we got here? I don't know, another one just showed up out of nowhere. Another one. This is Peter's car. He's a customer of ours. He was supposed to be here today, but we could insert a picture of Peter right here. Boom, <laughs> that's Peter, okay. Thanks, Pete. Yeah, thanks, Pete. But for now, we have his car and we could talk all about it. So it's like street or race, but we already saw the race, so now let's talk about the street car. Well, hey there, fellow Hoonigan. How does a free car sound? You like buying Hoonigan gear? Are you thinking about buying Hoonigan gear? Well, we've got a deal for you. We're giving away Ken Block's very own 2013 Ford Focus ST Company Cruiser. Car tastefully built in 2013 to be the HHIC's daily driver turned Hoonigan Racing Division company vehicle. Starting today, every single dollar you spend at Hoonigan.com gains you one more entry into the raffle. That means you spend 50 bucks, you get 50 times the entries. It's as simple as that. You don't gotta do anything else. Head on over to Hoonigan.com slash giveaway to see if you're eligible. Who knows what kind of VIPs have driven in this thing? Travis Pastrana, Bukin Woodbine, Andres Backer, Trick Daddy, Obscure 80s band Oingo Boingo, and more. What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Hoonigan Autofocus. I'm Larry Chen and my really good buddy, Rad Dan, What's up, guys? is here to show us this awesome street build. So we already did a video on his pro drift car, but I kind of want to see some of the work that you guys do on street cars, because not everything is just about racing and drifting. Uh, with Rad Industries. Rad Industries, you guys supply parts and you guys actually do work to probably some of the best street Supras in the world. Okay, we could say that. I don't know, That's that could be anyone's opinion. Um, I'm thankful for every street Supra we get to work on and this particular one, this customer, his name's Peter, uh, like I said, kind of just let me do whatever. He's like, do you like your kind of style on some stuff and make it really nice, make the engine bay really clean? He'd give a little of his input and then just kind of let me do stuff. And then he did the whole outside, the style he wanted, which I'd say is right on point. That sounds like probably the perfect customer. <laughs> I think it is. It is the perfect customer. He's just like a car enthusiast at heart. He has a lot of cool projects and other exotic cars too. So. This had been a dream car of his, and it had kind of like a sad, you know, start story, like a lot of car, you know. Someone wants their dream car and they find the right chassis and maybe it's like 10 years before it comes to life. He has a similar story. And he had it at a shop. They built a motor, bead blasted some parts, and it, like the head had some bead blast in it, just toasted the motor after like 10 miles. Then he tried to rebuild it with them, then had a falling out with them. It sat for many years at another shop then he like said okay let's take it to jv auto body to get the paint done and he's asking that's the guy that paints my car and he's like should i have dan build my super and jv's like yeah and like i'd already met peter in the you know the car world's only so big and we live similar areas of orange county so i had met him but i didn't even know he owned a supra and then one day he's calling me can i have you build my supra and then Let's, we could look all around it and I'll show you what we did. It's a really yeah. cool car. So what year is this one? This one's a 93 90, or 93.5, like true super enthusiast will say that, but it's a 93 and um, it's a true six speed car. And then we did like all the stuff to make it single turbo and you know, standalone ECU and all that stuff. Well, let's, look, let's take a look at the outside first. Okay. Right away, obviously the paint is it's a Nardo? Audi Nardo, but I don't know the, is that, I don't I know that's the what it code is. Nardo, for it or whatever. I wish I did. So on the outside, wow, look at those wheels. Talk about blinging wheels, CCWs. Yep. <laughs> this is like the period correct, I guess, like build. Like if you saw like 10 years ago, people would always do a CCW classic on it. And so he kind of just did that. I don't know. I really like the outside of this car. I mean, and this color, like you're saying, it's not something you ever see on a Supra. So when you see it, you're like, wait, wait, what, wait? And then you keep looking back at it. It seems like it's a, it's a lot of premium JDM parts too. You have the endless brakes, which seems like it barely clears. Some you know, of them are JDM, there. some like he has a ETS, which like extreme turbo systems, titanium exhaust. So there's some like American JDM, like inspired company parts on it, or like Australian parts. Like we have a lot of hypertune stuff on this one, but 
This is like a Shine Auto Project um, rear diffuser that you can get. And then this is a, just a TRD carbon uh, three-piece rear wing you could get. Oh, it's actually a Toyota. Toyota makes this, yes. Yeah. So there is replicas out there. For all I know, this is like authentic, but because um, there's like three companies that'll make it identical to original Toyota one. But I would assume it is because it's Peter. Uh, I absolutely love the license plate so much. Um, 2JZ RAR, financial mistake. I don't know Peter, but uh, I really like him already. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so show us some of the stuff that you did for this car. Um, the, should we open the hood? Yeah, the, the, of course, with your builds, including your pro Formula Drift car, the engine bay is the centerpiece and you guys put your touch to it. Wow. We did similar things to the engine bay, like the Formula Drift car. Okay, so the motor came to us with the head already installed, like the timing was already on, like that was kind of it. There was no intake manifold, no exhaust manifold. He had this exhaust manifold in a box and he had this turbo already in a box. Um, and he had these two lines already made because I would have probably made them like this if I got to do everything. But we used those parts and then we just did the rest at our shop. And Let's see, so we went with a Hypertune intake manifold. I like those because they're a really clean look. Um, that's not really gonna up the power unless you're way over, you know, over a thousand horsepower. But man, that'll clean up your engine bay. So why not? And Peter wanted that, so we did that. And then we did some stuff like these XRP crimp hoses, these Pro Plus hoses, clean up some stuff like that. We did like the custom breather tank we did all the plumbing and all the fuel system stuff that like you can't really look at everything it's some of it's under the car but it's kind of interesting that it still has a it. clutch fan so unless you can get minimum 3850 cfm on two like what we would say if the customer's insistent on electric fans i insist we're gonna be like you have to buy a durali fan shroud kit otherwise you're going to just overheat like it'll probably work fine when you're on the freeway or whatever but if you get to a stoplight and if you ever turn your AC on for sure you're gonna overheat so stock fan is like never gonna overheat but it is like old-school technology kind of like a truck did you have a chance to dyno this yeah this one made like 705 Damn! and so this is a Borg Warner 8374 which that just sounds like a lot of numbers to you guys. It's 62 millimeter front side. So kind of capped out that turbo. We just maxed it out. And this car is on an AEM engine management system, but it has a flex fuel sensor. So if he can't coordinate being at an E85 station and he just has to put pump gas in there, 91, the sensor is going to read it and detune his car to like, I think it's 450 for the pump gas setting. So he's not going to hurt anything. That's really, that's useful. Yeah, yeah, that's. He won't have to do anything. He just, the car will like read it and be like, no, nope, we're gonna like cross you out on like high boost settings. So that's kind of cool. So he can just start it and drive it and do whatever, you know? So it's a pretty perfect weekend car, PCH cruiser, you know? Like and that. maybe go exotic hunting or whatever you want to do with it. <laughs> exotic hunting. <laughs> Track down some cars to be like, let's do a pull. Nice car. What's the retail on one of those? More than you can afford, pal. Ferrari. So this is also... So it's uh, also a Targa, yeah. Targa, like your race car. Yep. All right, so let's check out the interior. It's pretty clean, and it uh, seems like it's mostly stock, huh? Yep, so it is mostly stock inside. He does like carbon fiber, so he was trying to get as many carbon fiber panels and covers as he could. Um, it still has like the stock get trake six speed, no short shifter. If you're a super guy and you've driven with a short shifter, they like to make you miss shift. So the stock linkage, even though it's a little more throw, I'd say stay with that. There is nice short shifters, but just stay with the stock one. He did that. It's got like a little bit of like customized gauge cluster that he, I think he got that from Stu Hagen. That's a dude up in the Pacific Northwest. It's like super guy that'll build these like you could kind of customize it however you would want it mm -hmm. and he'll redo it um peter put this screen in there but other than that it's mostly stock He so these seats i had put in my black 98 supra these were really expensive back in the day but then 
since then I was sponsored by Sparco and I was like, I don't want to. And then I was like, I'm, I'm going to get rid of these. And he's like, I want those. Cause they're like the carbon Kevlar lightest weight ones oh, Recaro yeah. makes, this is you know, nice. yeah. but they're like an older version. So then I was not, I don't know. I was just going to sell them. And he's like, I'll take them. And so then he put them in here and like, they literally never got used cause my black Supra just sat with a cover on it mostly. So that's cool to see these like getting used and they look really good in here. And then he put like a super clean 98 wheel on here. A little bit different than the 93 to 97 wheel looks almost like a Camry steering wheel. So, Whoa, it actually has a lot of miles on this chassis. Yeah. This, it does this, have a this lot. must have been like seriously somebody's daily driver for a long time. Probably was, but like, wow. Peter oh, took oh. it down to like, cause if you look, the paint was even like inside the door jams and stuff. Yeah, so this, this car was like, so blown apart when we it came to us and then it was like one of those projects that's harder because you weren't there at taking it apart you know but yeah. like you're saying this car had like two lives and it's, it has a cool second life you know wait so what color was it originally because there's no way to tell like every single panel was i think massaged. it was red wow i think oh, it was gosh. red because like there's a spot I, well, I went to the paint shop when it was there. I'm like drawing a blank, but I'm pretty sure it was red. Hmm. Is there anything in the trunk? Um, I don't think the trunk has, it's still just painted and he didn't put the carpet back in there. We can look though. Just got the battery in it. Whoa, but they actually even painted this stuff? Yeah, he like dynamited it, which is different, but he did that and then painted it. What a great customer, really. <laughs> like the, the cool attention dude. to detail. Um, you know, keeping this thing on the road, the fact that it has 180,000 miles. I know, but he like redid so many things like bushings and stuff. So like it drives pretty much like it would have 50,000 miles with like a 50,000 mile car with coilover. So it's a little stiffer, you know, but it's, it was a nice drive. I, he let me drive it out here. So <laughs> feeling like a hero on the highway. And Listen, with that like... said, your, uh, what was the, this one an automatic? No, it was a manual. Oh, was but it a manual? 31. <laughs> 231,000 miles. So like the poor chassis. Like <laughs> that's what I love about Supras. I love about Supras and a lot of Porsche guys are very um, into that too. They, they won't let like the car a, die. Kind yeah, of it's thing. kind of like a mark of, of uh, I, I guess it's a pride thing, right? Like it's so cool. Yeah, you have a Toyota and it's fast and it has a lot of miles. I mean, Porsche guys, I think NSX guys are probably the same, same way. They have right? to be. They just love putting miles on their car. The cool thing I've noticed, like, especially since having a shop, is there's these dudes that'll have had this car for some of them, like 15 years, not him. I don't know how long he's had it. I wish I did, but so like, other customers will have had their car 18 years, 15 years, and then they're like, it's come a time, and they're like, similar age to myself, I'm like mid 30s, and they have the money and they're like, let's take everything apart and just fix everything. And they'll spend like the value of the Supra at the given time and make it like immaculate and redo all the bushings. And then they have like their same car that they've been in love with for all those years. And then it feels good to weekend drive it again. And it's like what you're saying, Porsche guys do that, NSX guys. I'm sure there's Nissan guys that do that with certain cars, like Skylines, I'm sure. And wow. it's like they're, it's like we're in the era of JDM like doing refurbishes on like, well, like, look at your Z. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so this is kind of one, one thing that we actually had a chance to talk about off camera before we started filming. What do you think about the prices of these Mark IV Supras? Uh, it's like the, it's too much. I mean, you have five <laughs> yourself, right? I have five. But, and I would want more, but not when they're costing that much. I'm like, I can't get myself that it just doesn't feel right. Can you believe that I one can't. sold for $180,000? It's just not right. And it's like, you, I guess that's where we are, though, in the world where this car was like obtainable then. And then there's fewer of them. But in reality, there's still a lot of them out there. So I don't know why it's so expensive. Honestly, it's, it's like, the par problem is because of people like you and me. They who, won't let them go kind of. Well, no, we grew up with them. Okay. We grew up uh, idolizing them. And oh, it's and just stuck in that era, you know, in the, the 90s. Uh, this is there's never going to be a car like this ever. 
Same with the NSX. They're so expensive and I, I couldn't grasp buying one. I would want one, but I'm not paying that much. Crazy. Well, let's, uh, let's go for a ride. Uh, I, wanna, I wanna see what this feels like. So this car has a boost setting knob here uh -huh. with five different settings. Um, Is it running E85 right now? Yeah, it's on. I got a full tank this morning, but he only puts E85 in here. Oh. So we're at like 84% ethanol content. Oh, okay. Which is good enough for probably a thousand horsepower, but this doesn't make that much, so we're good. So, um, I've never actually driven a Mark IV Supra. What? Yeah. Yeah. I, I have a Mark V Supra, but I know, of course, I know it's not the same thing, guys, but um, can you believe that? I've driven, I feel like, every other car under the sun. I've in terms of like this era Me i've too. driven the r32 r30 uh, i have r32 i have uh, the uh, i've driven an r34 i've driven an nsx i've driven pretty much everything in this era 300 zx all of that except for a mark IV supra and you want this to be the first one you drive yeah why, why not why not the race car <laughs> this okay you are the scummiest scumbag, I think, ever. I mean, I'm a Hoonigan, but you are an honorable Hoonigan. Like, you're like a, like, wow, okay. If you want, we, you could drive this one, but if you want to drive the race car, you could do it. All right. I, uh -oh. I've known this guy for over 10 years. Uh -oh. oh my God. My foot slipped a lot and then I just stayed in it. Yet. So you want to drive it? Yeah, I want to drive it. This thing is crazy. <laughs> what well, actually has a lot of traction. I'm surprised for it's a real wheel drive car. It's got, so right now that's probably 600 horsepower. Uh -huh. It's not the max setting. And it's got 305, so, and they're the Toyos. They're sticky. I, wow, that is incredible. It's I think so we should fast. pull over and let him drive, huh? But, but it, the thing is, it's so, <laughs> like the sound is amazing too. It does sound good. There's, um, there's nothing. It's like a jet I, spooling on your side. I know, I, I kind of feel like there's nothing like an inline six turbo sound. <laughs> it sounds so good. It's like, it feel, fills everything. It's like my favorite sound. I love the sound of a TJ when you get deep in boots. Yeah, yeah, Dad, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But I'm gonna pull over. Okay. I've driven a lot of Supras. Um, I want you to experience it. Okay. I All think right. Peter does too. All right. All right. Here we go. Thanks, Pete. All right. Here we go. This is this seat is so comfortable. It's like just right. I like it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, this thing is rowdy already. Like I feel how much power it already has in a way, you know? Yeah, it's somewhat of like a race car on the street. I'm just trying to drive it like a normal car. <laughs> oh, it, this is already fun driving it slow. I don't even need to floor it. <laughs> I think you do. This thing is amazing. You know, it's actually not that stiff either. Like oh, like the like chassis? Like I'm just running over these yeah. potholes here. The, for like that, of man. all the cars we get to like build, this one has decent suspension on it. Uh -huh. Like with the right spring rates. Right. Some of them are like what you're saying. You're just like, it's obnoxious to drive it. Right. I just, I love turbo cars. <laughs> it's like, I always say it's like flooring it twice. Right? Yeah, you floor it one time and then it, and then ah! it just kicks in. It's like, it's like crazy. It's like, doubles its horsepower right when the boost kicks in. <laughs> That's the real deal. Oh my God, I, I'm actually really surprised how much traction it has. It just like, squats and goes. Like, really moves you. I um, actually, this one never just roasts the tires because yeah. it has so much meat back there. Oh my god. And it's like just at the cusp of not enough horsepower. Yeah, yeah. Like um, certain cars that'll make like 800 and up like will never find traction, even I, if they have these tires. 
this is nice. This is probably the most amount of usable power that you could have really I on think, the street. I think you're right too. Wow. This is what I, I, I see what you mean about like exotic hunting, yeah. right? You go exotic hunting. <laughs> so good. All right, hey, this is probably the worst car to, uh, to drive as the first Supra because I'm spoiled for life after this. Now you're gonna, you yeah. guys, you guys build a, a something really amazing. Like now you have to one up yourself with like an 800 horsepower next time. <laughs> yeah. How about like 840 at the wheel with a sequential? Uh, Wow, this is this is really nice. And it's so drivable when you're just going slow. Like you could take this to go get groceries. You, yeah, it's like pretty versatile for, cause like still has the stock transmission. Yeah. The clutch is probably the hardest part about this car, but it's not that bad. Realistically, I mean, this could be just like a, a, a any Porsche GT3. That's true, you know, yeah. It could be any like that kind of street car where it's kind of stiff, but it's not that bad. And it's a little loud, but then it sounds so good. So it's like, ah, I'll deal with the noises. Oh, the reason I don't have a street car is I might end up in jail if I had one, I think. <laughs> because like, it's just asking you to like floor it the whole time and yeah. then like, I'll probably be like, hey, this corner might be fun to drift. And then before you know it, like I accidentally do that on an on-ramp and there's a cop or something. Oh. I'm like, why? So that's kind of that's one of the, uh, one of my favorite quotes from you. Um, and I don't know if you, if, you, if uh, you want me to say it, but I asked you, I was like, hey, have you ever brought your comp car to the Hoonigan Burnyard? And you're like, no, I know myself. Yeah, well say enough. whatever you want to say. I know myself well enough, and I know that I have no self control, yeah. and I know I'm going to smash the rear end into something, you know? I'll like either fuck up something, like the body parts, because I'll just go too crazy, or I'll like hurt the motor, because I'm just like on limiter around there until my tires are gone. And I just, I can't. If we're in the moment, like, let's just have the most fun in the moment we can. And I, that's why I don't have a crazy street car, because I'll get in trouble. I think you are one of my favorite kinds of car guys. You know, like, you let the excitement take over and you just yeah. can't, you just can't control it because you love it so much. I it's do like, so it's much. It's like your heart. That's it. Like, True. that... That's that makes me feel so good. I love it so much. It's I a mean, good and bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys build some amazing things. Oh my God, this thing is beautiful. I'm glad you got to drive. This thing is so cool. I, I, I get it now. I get it. I get why people like these cars. I get why people like Supras. So the cool thing about this one is the bottom end is just stock piston, stock everything. It's just stock. The nice. top end has cams, that's it. Yeah, and Toyota just knocked it out of the park with this motor. That's that's it right there, right? Yeah, too bad they didn't make a 3J. That would have been cool. This thing is uh, something else. Oh, oh there, yeah, yeah. <laughs> In the dust. It's a little dusty, so it... That's what we've been looking yeah. for. <laughs> Wheel spin. A little bit. <laughs> I felt it. <laughs> yeah. It just, just yeah. it just goes up there. That's it. Amazing. That's like my favorite noise. Yeah. I'm like constantly driving a shopping cart at the grocery store. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm drifting it around. <laughs> yeah, I could see why you don't have a street car. Like if I do build one, I'm gonna wanna go to Cars and Coffee and then I'm gonna be like, well, if I build a street car, I should put Wisefab on it and probably a handbrake. And then it's like, no, I shouldn't. I don't need that. Go to the track for that. So good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're back. We're back in one piece. We are. Yeah. Uh, part of it is because this car is actually really easy to drive. It just kind of like takes it well and just says, yep, I can I can handle this or yeah. whatever. Yeah. That's one thing I like about this car. I remember when I first got my first one, everyone's like, that's a big car. Now there's a lot of bigger cars out there, but like it can kind of handle seven, 800 pretty well, which is pretty cool. And it like doesn't feel out of control everything, or anything, you know? Everything about it, like the gauges, so 90s, <laughs> so tight, all of like, all the shifting, everything, the pedals, no rattling. 
Um, very fun to drive over speed bumps and just, just cruising on, on that road that we we're just on. This is one of the ultimate street cars, really. This is it. It is. Yeah. I'm forever going to be like in love with this car. Until, yeah, I don't think something will, it'll be like, I'll be the old dude that's like, I still like Supra. <laughs> <laughs> Ra cares? Radical Dan with his Supras, man. <laughs> uh, so cool. Well, thank you so much for bringing this out for us. Thank you for letting me drive it. Thank you, Pete. <laughs> you you have a very awesome car. And maybe, hey, maybe we'll feature some of your other cars. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Hopefully. I think that's a wrap. <laughs>